Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Today is going to be uh, car content. i um, happy to say that I'm in North Carolina right now. I'm going to be here for a week. Uh, me and my cousin have lined up a lot of videos to review cars, look into them, go to dealerships. Uh, going to have a great time here in North Carolina. Going to put on some great content. I'm so excited. We got camera. We got uh, frameworks done. We got everything we're putting it all together um hopefully the videos come out the way they want i want them to um you're gonna see one of the videos posted probably tomorrow or the day after i mean depends how long editing takes but i just want to let you guys know that it's coming up i am so so happy to announce that um but today's video is going to be about corvettes and reason why i'm doing a corvette video i have not done a corvette video which is crazy because that's my favorite dream car right now. Um, that's attainable. The car that I want that's not attainable technically is the Murcielago SV, which I still think is attainable. You just got to put the right plan in place and hopefully I can get the steps to get there. But today is going to be about Corvettes. So the first Corvette that really got me into it was a C7 generation. I know that's a generation that a lot of kids are going to say they got them into it. It's a generation that is polarizing. It got everybody that from the um, Corvette before were usually older men. But now the C7 came out and it became an instant classic. Rappers wanted it. Kids wanted it. It became like an icon car. And then Ford is... Thinking for Chevy is going to be a C8 mid-engine. We will see how that goes. Um, I still like the front engine more. That's always been my thing. I always thought it was a great idea um, to do a mid-engine, but as like a side, but have the main staple still be front engine. We'll see what Chevy decides to do on that front. Um, but I'm going to start back to the C4 generation. That's a generation that, uh, that I started after the C7 really liking and knowing about his history. Uh, I like the C3 as well, but not as much as I like the C4 generation. C4 was really nicely cut, nicely um, put together, good interior. And it came out with the ZR1, which is a great model. Uh, manual only though, unfortunately. So it is it is much harder to find and more rare, but it's not maybe as fast as it could have been with, with an auto. But at the end of the day, it was more driver enthusiast, more driver focus. So I was made that way. Next generation, C5 Corvette. C5 Corvette is a crazy series because everybody thought that they were going to have a CR1. They, were, they thought they could get a better version of the Z06. It never happened, unfortunately. The C5 generation is kind of one of those forgotten generations just because it only came really in the base or Z06 really and that's really kind of what made it a bummer don't I'm not saying it's a terrible generation I just feel like GM could have done more with that generation the Z06 was a great handling car as a great track weapon well, let's move on to the next generation which was the C6 generation the C6 generation was an absolute fantastic generation it came out in a time where People were starting to look at it, starting to see, okay, I can see myself in it. And they came out with a lot of the models that they have now, the C7, with it came in a Stingray, then it came in a Grand Sport, then the, the great Z06 launched for it, but then like the ZR1, and it was like, oh my god, it's over. Like how fast they were able to put 0 to 60 times, how fast you're able to burn through rubber, how fast you were able to shred gears. I mean, it was crazy, amazing track weapon. King of the streets, they called it. Or King of the Track, I'm sorry, they called it. And it was an absolute beast. And then the C7 came out and it absolutely improved on every single bit the C6 did. It gave it a eight speed auto. 2015 year and above, 2014 still had the 6-speed, but 2015 and above had the 8-speed automatic, 7-speed um, manual. It was super reliable, great everyday car. You're in the cruising form, which is a Stingray, and I would even say the Z51 package that came that you could get with it still 
was a pretty good crew was still in the cruising section when you moved up to the grand sport you were you wanted a little bit more power and maybe take it out to the track you know for a little bit of track times but definitely nothing you're gonna track on a daily basis maybe just a one-time track day and mostly just king of the streets type of thing then the Z06 came out, 650 horsepower, 650 pound feet of torque. Absolutely blew the lids right off everybody's mind because it started competing with supercars with that level of performance, that level of numbers. Uh, Italian designs became really scared of this car. And they really noticed that when the ZR2, ZR1 of the C4, but now come full circle with the C7 generation Z06. Because it was competing with the likes of Ferraris, Lamborghinis, it was able to keep up with even demons. Um, it was really able to put together a great package in a fiberglass car. And then the ZR1 came out and it absolutely can compete with any supercars. It doesn't even have a supercar price. It's under $130,000. You can get one, so that's another big bonus. A lot of these cars are going for over sticker, though, which is... Unfortunate because GM really needs to regulate their dealers right now because the dealers are absolutely crazy because they keep charging them 20000 over sticker, which is crazy. Because I found one the other day that would I built, I saw that it was you could build it for 135000 but they're charging 155000 It has already 2,000 miles already used on it. So I don't even understand why they're marketing it up that much. It's crazy. Definitely a car to get, though. Uh, a lot of people like the manual more engaging, but I always thought the automatic would been, is still better. I would like for them to do a dual clutch as the next one, so it actually could be a direct competitor with these supercars. At this point now, it is a competitor, but a, the dual clutch makes those other cars, even with, a less, even with a little less horsepower, still faster and better because of that dual clutch, that transmission is just unmatched. Um, and the power-to-weight ratio is, again... Up in the air, especially with it being in the high 3000s. So I hope you guys liked that video. That was a brief history on my love of Corvettes and Corvettes in general. Well, make sure to like and subscribe and get ready for banging content. Have a nice day, guys.